Hello, and welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. Today, we're talking about an exciting new program, which will allow some high school juniors and seniors to sleep in if they choose and start school at 9 a.m. We're talking about a first-of-its-kind late-start blended learning program, which is being piloted in all Jordan School District high schools in the upcoming school year. Students will have to provide their own transportation for the late start, and this is an option not required of students, but we are excited about the possibilities. Here to talk about the program and how it will work is Instructional Design Specialist Michelle Truman. So you've done blended learning for about 20 years. Yes. How would you define blended learning? Let's start with that. The main thing that you have to think of the difference between blended learning and a technology-rich classroom is that in blended learning, students have some control over the pace of their learning, the place of their learning. So whether that's sitting on a beanbag in a classroom or on their bed at home or at the kitchen table, and then the path of their learning. So there's some choice involved in that as well. So those three P's are the things that are gonna distinguish blended learning from a a traditional classroom um, that's technology infused. And that makes a lot of sense because if those three things are flexible for students and for teachers, then there's a lot higher chance of engagement. Absolutely. I mean, who doesn't want choice? Right. You know, do you want the blue lollipop or the red lollipop? Well, I like red better. Okay, well, here you go. Everybody wants choice. And this provides choice, not just about where you learn or how fast you learn, and but even when you learn. Correct. We'll talk more later about what a blended learning model is. But basically, it's an online course that still allows students the chance to interact in person with the teacher as necessary. We're, we're setting up classes like this at each of our high schools. We have a total of 36 teachers teaching 13 different courses that will allow students that level of flexibility that hasn't been available before. We know the health benefits for students, not just physical health, but social and emotional wellness that can come from being able to sleep on a rhythm that makes more sense as a teenager. Even when teenagers try to go to bed early or do go to bed early, they're on a different pattern and they're on a different rhythm. As, as anyone who's been watching the news knows, it's been, a, it's been a hot topic lately. But it's something we've been working on for a while, and, and I'm really excited to have Michelle here to talk about what the program's going to look like. So, Michelle, tell us a little bit about what this program is starting to shape up to be uh, out in our high schools. So they are initially coming in for the late start at 9 a.m., and that is exactly what's happening. So teachers volunteered at each of the high schools to participate in this. And when I say volunteer, um, they volunteered to be um, instrumental in changing education for kids in Jordan School District. What we're gonna do is we are taking the traditional curriculum that teachers typically lecture, give assignments, kids go home and practice via homework. What we're doing is we're creating fully online, interactive, engaging courses that kids can work on at home at any time they choose, whether it's midnight or 6 a.m. Then when they need extra assistance or they're gonna work with their peers, come in and do a chemistry lab, they can come in to their traditional classroom teacher and work on that with him or her. So will the teacher have office hours where they're available outside of normal class time? And absolutely. So teachers meet periods one through four on one day and periods five through eight on another day. So when kids come in late start would be first period and fifth period. And so if they need some extra help, they can come to school during that block of time and meet with their classroom teacher. Um, But then that's also changed. We have one of our schools. They've had two math teachers pair up. And so what's happening is the first math teacher is going to come in the standard time for first period, and he will be in the classroom during that time. The second math teacher is going to come to school two hours late and stay two hours later after school. So if I'm a football player and I want to come in and get extra assistance, I would come during that first period time. But if I'm another type of student 
who would rather come in after school, we will have a teacher there to support that as well. So these two teachers are going to share that they're each going to be responsible for their own classes, but they will share that extra assistance giving on either side of the time schedule. So in other words, it creates greater flexibility for students and for teachers. Absolutely. So from a student perspective, what this looks like is rather than signing up for eight classes where I'm going to go to a classroom, I can sign up for two classes, first and fifth period, as a blended learning course, and now I don't have anywhere I have to be before nine o'clock, and so I can get some extra rest and set a schedule that more matches my lifestyle as a teenager. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, And not only that, it allows for flexibility. So as long as I have an internet connection, I can go to class anywhere I want. I can think of many reasons that students might want to do this. Um, It might sound like laziness, not starting until nine, but really there are great health benefits to allowing students to to get more sleep in the morning. Um, And there may be health issues that can be addressed by allowing for greater flexibility in in the school day. Well, not only that, um, they will be required to come to school at points during the during the quarter because they will if I'm taking a chemistry class it's great to do an online simulation but now I've experienced that online simulation I need to come in and get my hands dirty I want to I want to play with the beakers and I want to dump solutions and see things that happen sure. and we need to act like real scientists and that's what real scientists are going to do they're going to study and and figure out what they want to do and then they need to do it I have to tell you, if I could go back in time to the 1980s, I would have loved this as a high school student, just having this level of flexibility. And I'm excited that our kids are going to have that chance uh, coming up this next year. Um, How are the teachers feeling about it? It's it's funny. Um, There's been a little bit of reaction across the board. Uh, The teachers are involved. They are go-getter teachers. And a lot of them are young. And I say young, I say, you know, 30, in their 30s. So they have their teaching chops underneath them, but they have a lot of energy. And they've grown up and into this environment with technology. And so they don't see it as an adjunct. They don't see it as something in addition to, it's just part of their their everyday. So it's not anything unique to them. And they're really excited about about doing this. Uh, They look and go, oh wow, this is a lot of work. It is because essentially when you're putting your content online, you are creating not only a textbook, you're creating a digital online interactive uh, book and now I've got videos I'm creating and now I'm creating Nearpod uh, slide decks and I'm creating all this really rich information that's going to go along. And not only that, I can, um, and not only that, I can also add in extra helps. If I'm in a classroom and I'm teaching, that's the teaching. If kids didn't get it, then somehow we have to come up with something else to help them. Right. But online, what I can do is I can provide the lesson. And then at the end of the lesson, I can say, and if you need some other strategies to help you, here's a video, here's a text, here's some additional reading. How, how do we look at blended learning versus just online learning? What's well, the difference? There's there with online learning there's typically not that component of face to face what you've described is exactly what i like about blended learning is that there is a a human component to that and so it's just one more part of the continuum of learning a traditional classroom on one end of the spectrum and a strictly online class on the other end of the spectrum and in between you have blended learning that has positive elements of both what are some of the myths that you encounter when you're working with people who are not used to blended learning or learning online? It's that technology is going to replace the teacher. Look at all the research. Every piece of research will show that the biggest component of a child's education is the teacher in the classroom. Now, whether that's a virtual classroom, a blended classroom, or a face-to-face classroom, it does not matter. It is the teacher that is the most important thing. So technology is still just the another way of connecting to that teacher that is essential to effective education. 
Absolutely. Um, kids need to have a connection with a person, whether it is virtual, just like I talked about my adult students. They still need me to be able to communicate with them, to um, look at their papers, to give them feedback, to be there for support. Same with the, the students in our classrooms. Um, they, can, they can come to you as a face-to-face -face teacher and say, hey, I need assistance with this. You can do that virtually online, but how rich is it to be able to take an online class that all the content's there, that I can be up when I'm wide awake at midnight, take my class, understand the material, and if I don't, the next day I send an email to, a te to my teacher and say, hey, I'm gonna pop into your class at X amount of time, or can you meet me in the lab? and be able to arrange for either a one-on-one -on -one or a small group as assistance. So it's no longer a command performance. It's 7.30 a.m. Monday morning, time for math. You know, exactly. now, now, now you can match up, you, you, can, you can make that fit into your schedule and, and, and everything a lot better. Well, let's say that I'm, um, I'm a football player, okay? And we're doing two-a-days because we have this big uh, game coming up. And so um, I really am not gonna have time to do a bunch of work this week. So I know that on Saturday, I'm gonna sit down and I'm going to do a couple hours worth of um, coursework. Then I can go take a run, clear my brain, and then I'm gonna come back in and do another couple hours. I've now front loaded all that instruction that I would have had to sit in class and do the sit and get method of um, of the traditional school model. Now I don't have to. Now I freed up my time because I've taken and completed a week's worth of math on my Saturday when I had the time to do so. And now I can dedicate myself to something I'm passionate about and that's my sports. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll head out to Riverton High School where we talk to teachers about blended learning. In Jordan School District, the possibilities are endless for anyone looking to grow with a team of professionals working together to provide the very best for students in education. If you're looking for a great job with great pay and benefits in a supportive environment, head to workatjordan.org and find your future career. In Jordan School District, people come for the job and stay for the adventure. Explore the many options. Apply today at workatjordan.org. I'm here at Riverton High School talking with a couple of teachers who are working on the blended learning project to help allow high school students to have a later start if they'd like to do that using blended learning as a way to accomplish that. Please introduce yourselves to the folks at home and tell them uh, what you teach. Hello, I'm Victoria Johnson. I teach biology here at Riverton with my best friend and coworker. I'm Bethany Alston and I've been, I also teach biology here at Riverton and uh, just happy to be here. Mm -hmm. what, what interested the two of you in being part of this, in converting some of your classes to blended learning? Two years ago, Tori was, we were looking at ways to assess students better, and Tori was like, we gotta get on Canvas. And little did we know, the following year, the state purchased the licenses for all public educators to have Canvas. There's also some really cool features on Canvas for teachers to grade. So you can give some really descriptive feedback pretty quickly, which is a, a godsend for teachers, so we can give students what they need faster. So you told me um, how you started out with putting classes online and using Canvas and kind of moving toward blended learning. You said that it was because you wanted to give better evaluation of student work. What are some of the other factors that made you want to be teaching in this way? It's just nicer for kids to have, uh, we have a lot of kids that don't get it the first time we teach it, um, and especially where we have limited time in the classroom. Um, it's just nice to have those resources there in a concentrated area so the students have the ability to go back through what they're learning. So if they did miss something, they have resources available to them to help them um, relearn the material. Um, it's also just nice for communication with feedback. Um, 
What else? It's great for differentiating education as well. So certain assignments can be assigned to students who maybe need more help, and those assignments don't have to be assigned to everybody. And the students who get those assignments, nobody ever knows that they got the extra work. So um, there's some really great features for meeting kids where they're at and teaching them moving forward without ever having anybody else know the better. Mm -hmm. So the learning is more personalized, mm -hmm. it's more flexible, parents can be more involved, and it sounds like it's easier for teachers in some ways once you get it up and running. It's probably a lot of work to get to that point though, is that, is that true? Yes, it's a lot of shareability. It does take some time to load everything in and get it in the order you want, but that um, doing that work up front makes our job as teachers a lot more, we, we transfer more into a role of mentoring and assisting students in their learning rather than just lecturing all the time. If there's a parent or student who isn't sure about whether they want to take a blended learning class next year, what would you do to, what would you say to them to explain what the advantages might be for them individually? As far as the advantages go, I would definitely say it's it's more contoured to what they need. So we can meet their needs better at an individual level, personalize the learning, um, especially with late start, if they need to do the work at home, but they need to do it later so they can get a little more rest, um, that could benefit them. Um, other it, benefits? Yeah, it's helpful for students who have uh, different work schedules. We know a lot of students actually work in the morning or if they work in the afternoon. It just helps them be able to do their learning in their own time. Um, and then we are available still as resources to them. Either they can come in during a selected amount of time um, or they can email us or video chat or whatever else is needed, but it just is a little bit more autonomous for them where they can kind of pick and choose when they get to do their work yeah, through the content with the exception of assessments and labs um, which they will have to be in class for um, so they'll they'll have to their schedule will have to work in order to be here for those mandatory days um, some other suggestions that we've made especially in the course descriptions that we've written are that if these students plan to take a blended learning course like this um, they need to be prepared to be pretty self-monitoring to make sure they get the work done. Of course, we will check in with them and we plan to, for lack of a better word, hover over what they've been able to accomplish to keep them on track. But it's going to require some effort on their part to make sure they're, they're keeping up with the class. But like you described, parents now aren't just relying on Skyward to look up grades. They can get right into the course. And it's probably the sort of format that allows parents to be more involved in their students' education than ever before. Yeah, which we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our dedicated teachers at Riverton High School for sharing their thoughts on the blended learning late start option for high school juniors and seniors. When we come back, some final thoughts with Michelle Truman on how your student can get on board. Do you want ideas for being happier and healthier? I'm McKinley Withers, Health and Wellness Specialist for Jordan School District. Please join us every week for Wellness Wednesday. It is a feature on the Jordan District website that offers free and simple tips for improving your health and wellness. We cover a variety of topics to help families like reducing stress, improving eating habits, finding more time to build relationships, and increasing overall happiness. Check out Wellness Wednesday every week on the Jordan School District website at jordandistrict.org. For additional health and wellness resources, visit wellness.jordandistrict.org. We're back with Michelle Truman talking about the blended learning late start that will be available at each of our high schools next year. Students who take at least two classes through a blended learning model which is a combination of online courses and interaction with a teacher, will not be required to be at school before 9, but will still be able to access all of the classes they would if they were registered like everyone else. So we're excited about this option. How do students access this? It's going to be different depending upon the high school. All high schools will have it on their website. Some high schools will be having informational meetings in which parents and students will be invited to. 
and all high schools will have some sort of communication come home. There'll be a sky alert and we will also be sending things directly to parents via your children. So be on the lookout for both of those. So to sum it up, I'm really excited about this because students will have the flexibility to start their day at nine o'clock by taking a couple of blended learning courses. Those courses will include very visual and personalized learning that is connected to a teacher at the school they attend the rest of the day so they have access to the human being behind all this instruction and in fact have regular intervals at which they meet with that teacher. And I think that combination can really kickstart a different type of learning for students and provide the type of flexibility that can help them be healthy and happier at school and just in general. Absolutely. Lots of exciting things happening. We're going to take another break. When we come back with Michelle Truman, Two Truths and a Lie. If you're always looking for opportunities to learn something new, why not join us for the next Jordan Parent University? Jordan Parent University is an opportunity for parents to better understand issues that impact their own students and education. It's an evening class designed to help parents with things like planning for the road beyond high school, better understanding students' social and emotional health and wellness, and knowing who to call when there are issues involving a school or a student. Jordan Parent University is free and open to the public. For a list of upcoming classes, times, and locations, go to jpu.jordandistrict.org. See you there. We're back with Michelle Truman, and now it's her time to lie to the superintendent. It's only been a few months that she's worked in Jordan School District, but this is her chance to lie to the superintendent on the supercast. Okay, so I have two children. Okay. I was a speed skater when I was in middle school. Okay. And my favorite thing to do is go to the beach. A speed skater in middle... I did not know there was such a thing as middle school speed skaters, but there must be. Mm, I'm going to say you hate the beach. No, I love the beach. Oh, it's my favorite time. Okay. To... You know what? I think I might have actually said three truths. Did I say three kids or two kids? Two kids. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be three. I have two kids. All those were truth. I set you up for failure. <laughs> All right, two truths and a lie. <laughs> But Michelle <laughs> cannot tell a lie. Michelle that's is true. The, People will Michelle say that's is, true. Michelle is the George Washington <laughs> of Jordan School District. Please don't chop down any cherry trees, <laughs> but we appreciate everything else you're doing here. It's awesome. You're doing great. And I'm excited about all of the energy teachers are bringing to this. And uh, we'll, more to come. And we'll, we'll talk more uh, as, as the program gets put into place next year. We'll have you back to, to talk more about what, what's happening out there. Thanks again, Michelle, for being on the show. And remember, whether you're at home, at school, or anywhere else, education is the most important thing you will do today. We'll see you out there.